Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And I'm Ken Decker, and today I've got a special guest. Uh, Michael, I can't get your last name. Pacito. 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 Okay, Michael Pacito. Italian background, you said? Yeah, my yeah. dad was born in Italy, but I'm very Canadian. Nice, very nice. So, he, you, so you're first generation Canadian? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, you, you have a couple businesses we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting. And so how did you find your calling to want to be, you're, you do photography, mm -hmm. and, and what's the other one? So I, I run a businesscontent.ca, and it's a business photography, commercial photography, uh, okay. as well as doing real estate photos. Mm -hmm. um, and also with my wife, we have a wedding business as well, too. Okay. But uh, the way I found my calling was actually, uh, it was re really interesting. I was in Ottawa, I was doing retail. I wasn't really doing like a lot you know, with my life and that. Mm -hmm. and one day my mom called me up and we we're chatting and it found out that she was opening up a newspaper out in Kempville. So oh, really? yeah, so I was like, you know, a newspaper in the digital age, well, what's that? But they needed a salesperson, I needed this. And so I said, you know what, you guys need this. Let me just, so I dropped everything. I, I, I quit my job, moved out to Kempville and through the paper is when I, they, I started having to fill in for taking photos. And okay. I just fell in love with it. And uh, my wife had been taking photos for a while before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just started just doing that full time and uh, also helping my parents with the newspaper. Okay, mm -hmm. so you found that that was your calling. Yeah, I mean, it's just to be able to, uh, I mean, I'm a very technical sort of person. So to be able to, you know, the composition, the camera, the text and that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think just being able to, I mean, helping my mom out uh, was a big one. And then just helping people through their wedding day. And uh, yeah, no, it's okay. a lot of fun. So you do that with your wife, the, the wedding photography? We do everything together. Oh, do you? you, yeah? you okay. hard, this is, we don't actually get separated too often. Wow, but, uh, and we didn't get her here on the set. Uh, that's the cameras are rolling. Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. all right. And so what do you love about photography? It sounds like you, you found a passion in it. What, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a technical side of it. There's also a creative side of it. Yeah. And so, so what do you love about it? Uh, with the wedding photography, um, which is what we first started with, the photos, is uh, what I think is the most, uh, the thing that we give to people the most is that we're thinking about their photos in 50 years. Like we're thinking about, we're thinking about the, our photos have an impact on someone for the rest of their lives and maybe their next generation, right? And I think being able to transition, and when most people are getting married, they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about, I got to get through my wedding day. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to transition someone from that place where they're like, uh, you know, wedding day, wedding day, wedding day, to, hey, I now have memories for the rest of my life where they're happy and they can relive those moments. It's, uh, it's really hard to beat that kind of a feeling of being able to be a part of that. Okay. Awesome. Great. So we've actually utilized your services from time to time yes, when yeah. we're uh, running a little behind in the spring market where we, uh, you know, we have a full-time uh, marketing person that does our photography mm -hmm. as well as our, our marketing. And when she's swamped, we call on you to go take photos yes. of houses and, yeah. and that kind of thing. And you've done some great work for some of our properties. Thank you. Some of them still for sale, so people can go online and actually see your handiwork. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> no, the uh, the real estate photography. It's something uh, again because I'm that technical minded person. It's just it's kind of fun because uh, usually I like I like being social. I like the weddings and that. But the real estate, it's you get to just be in a house. It's usually empty. Everyone's gone, and you can just focus on you know just making everything as pretty as possible so okay. yeah enjoy Great. that a lot and the lighting composition getting yeah. your depth of field and yes all my, that. that's where my wife comes in too she can worry about a lot of more of those other you know the uh, the lightings and things like that while i'm focusing on that the composition so it's always okay. teamwork is the best way to go yeah mm -hmm. and so in business it's important to know what your weaknesses are yeah so tell me how you handle that uh a lot of times when you're in business, I've been in business for about four years, so there's still lots that I need to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, but I find a lot of business owners can sometimes get in a bubble. Um, when, I, when I work on the newspaper, I do a couple hours every week doing ads for people. I see a lot of business owners that they're trying to do everything themselves. And, that's, okay. and when they get into an area that they can kind of do, but they don't know what they don't know, uh, they can get into trouble. So what I like to really do is try and reach out to experts in my f in either my field or uh, in 
other fields as well, too, to try and get that perspective. Because uh, the worst thing you can do is do something and you go full out on it, but there's one little small thing that somebody who's been in the business has made those mistakes before. Mm -hmm. um, and so like with the photography, um, I, it, photography is not easy. A lot of people think it, you know, it is, you just click the button, but as you're talking composition, there's uh, lighting, the mood, the message, uh, what you choose to photograph and what you choose not to photograph, all those little details can add up to uh, a lot of things. And if, so if you're not working in it constantly, um, like nobody, a lot of people will, like accountants, right? Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to do taxes. If I try to do that, I'm going to miss everything, you know? So, like, you get your accountant to do the accountant, you get the photographer, do the photography, real estate yeah. people, because otherwise you ever get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I guess there's some basics that even, you know, if you haven't taken any photography courses, you probably don't understand. Like, using flash mm -hmm. flattens your, your image. You don't get the, the same depth, yes. uh, the three-dimensional feel. Mm -hmm. And... Um, knowing what to focus on, yeah. where you want your focal point, mm -hmm. and also learning to change your, your depth of focus so that you can blur out backgrounds if you want or yeah. whatever. And, and that's where it starts to get creative, mm -hmm. right? The creative side comes in, and I think videography is similar, mm -hmm. uh, where you, you get creative on who you focus on and what you, you, know, what you don't and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and... Uh, the, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So any. So so you do wedding photography. You do houses. You do commercial photography. So if someone had a business and wanted some photography done uh, for their website or that sort of thing, whether they're a manufacturer or a, a contractor or whatever, taking some pictures of their maybe their vehicles or taking mm -hmm. pictures of them in action with tools or whatever. Yeah. That's the kind of thing you you do. Yeah, actually, one of our one of the most fun shoots that we've done just recently was actually for uh, Heritage Canada. We uh, they needed they were looking at stock photography and to get a bunch of kids to promote their tourism, and they weren't liking it. There's a lot of these like kind of cheesy like kids going I like this, and they just <laughs> they they didn't like all the standard like the thinking pose and like you know they're just like no no we don't want that we wanted some they wanted some real kids so that they could, on all their advertising, they have some real people. Right. And so we got like six kids, we put them, into, uh, put them into a room, we got them jumping around, we got them just like kind of becoming friends. We had to get them connecting with each other so that they actually looked like they were friends. So that's what they hired us for. We had you know, hair, makeup people, we had food, uh, there's all the parents too were around. Uh, you know, we, it, it was just a riot in, in, the, in the studio. Okay. So if you want to get kids to act natural, just give them sugar, right? Uh, you know, you got to be careful now. You got to be careful because too much energy. So that's why, you know, why it's good to be with my wife. Because I bring the energy and then she can kind of calm people down until we get them in that, that zone, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. So capturing the, the natural as opposed to a pose setting is, is big, right? Yeah, because people, I think, are tired of that corporate look. You know, I think, uh, like, I see a lot with your guys, like, you, you know, you see the Decker team, you know, you see a little personality in what you do, the, the newsletter, the fact that you do go all those, you try and bring family and community together, and that's not a corporate look. The corporate look is, you know, hey, we're this mysterious entity, and, you know, you should be happy that we're working with you kind of thing. So, I think uh, the more you try and just get those natural, those natural looks, you'll be more successful in your advertising. Like one of our, one of our pictures was posed, and yet we, we put on the Decker team toques, and, yeah. we're, you know, and we're just having fun. Exactly. And right. So you can tell that, because a corporate, a corporate look wouldn't be everybody wearing toques, except yeah. for Yetta. Yetta wouldn't put the toque on. <laughs> yeah. She already had the red stripe She's in her hair. She's got Osprey. So. You can't. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's, the, but then that's that, that line, right? Now, with the commercial photography, uh, you can do pose without it looking pose. And that's going back you know, to weaknesses and all that. Like, uh, if you don't know how to interact with people, if you don't know how to make people comfortable enough to, uh, to get in that place where they look natural, you're either going to look up with stiff stuff or the overpose. So it's, uh, right. yeah, it's a lot right. of fun. So Mike, just I'm going to interject for a second mm -hmm. and ask you, how would they reach you if they wanted you to f photograph a family event? Because a lot of times it's weddings, right? Yes. And there's other events that are important, uh, birthday milestones, uh, anniversaries, um, all kinds of things, whether it be baptisms, all kinds of things that maybe people would like to capture mm -hmm. 
in a quality format as opposed to you know just uh, an, a smartphone picture. Yes. They're, they're great, they're amazing, mm -hmm. and, and we have way more pictures now than we ever did because our camera is generally always with us. Yes. And yet, there's still, you don't get the composition, you don't get the quality of mm -hmm. the shot, you don't necessarily get the lighting because you don't have the... You also don't get the mom in the shot because she's taking all the photos. Because <laughs> she's, yeah, she's <laughs> you know, the one. mom's <laughs> taking the photos, right? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. My wife always tells me, you have to take a couple shots so they know I was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. And, and if, you, if you hire a photographer like yourself for those kind of events, then there's an easier way to capture it. You can still throw some stuff on social media. You can give them some lower res, mm -hmm. you know, images that are good for uploading to Facebook or whatever, because that's how people like to share these days. Mm -hmm. They definitely do. And uh, yeah, so that, that's really cool. And, and now do you do via videography as well as photography? The weddings, the wedding side, we're taking our time with it because to us it is so important to make sure that we focus on what we're really good at and what people know us for, right? Uh, the commercial side, we've been doing videos for a year or two with the newspaper, actually. We get a lot of fun because we get to do community events. We, uh, we do it as a kind of a, a fun extra kind of thing to help out, again, my parents' business in that. And uh, so we interview uh, like local sports teams, all the different uh, personalities in. Um, uh, but yeah, no, the, the video is it's a whole other ball game. Uh, you gotta worry about audio. Um, mm. Yeah, I could go into technical de 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 <laughs> details wherever, you know, but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot of fun. Well, they actually say that one of the most important things in uploading a video is the quality of the audio. Oh yeah, you could have, well, I mean, you could have a terrible, we could look like pixelated and everything, but as long as our voice comes, you can at least get through it. But if we looked amazing, you know, high def 4K and all that, but we were like this, you would, you'd be like next. Yeah, you can't, no yeah, time next, for that. Next video, I'm yeah, not yeah. watching that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you market if uh, business is better or how do you, how do you make marketing better? <laughs> well, to this kind of goes back a little bit to, um, you know, the knowing your weaknesses and that and making sure that you talk to experts, right? Um, but actually, I want to tell a funny story about that. Um, my mom, uh, I would say she has almost no marketing experience uh, at all. She, uh, she never studied marketing. She doesn't care for marketing. That's good not good newspaper owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, delegation, right? But the one thing, it's funny, is I, I, I study marketing as, like a, as a hobby almost, right? But my mom is one of the best marketers out there uh, because she really cares about her community. She, for, before she even was looking for uh, any business interests or anything, she's always been giving her time. She's been, um, she's, she volunteers at the, the seniors' homes. She, she's been giving so much to the community now. So when I came into Kempfil to as a salesperson, uh, if I was having trouble, you know, making a first uh, first impression, I would just say, "Oh, do you uh, you know uh, Maggie Boy?" Says, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's my mom." Like, "Oh, okay," you know. So um, my main takeaway from that is is that no matter how much you try, like, there's lots of tactics and and tricks in that. But I think at the very end of the day, is really caring. Uh, I think that gets you way further. That gets you further ahead than you'll ever get trying to just brute force your way. Um, yeah. So I think really, really kind of caring is uh, the way to go for that. Yeah, we we call that relational selling mm -hmm. because it, when they know you care more about the relationship and them yeah. than you do about making a sale, mm -hmm. then you then you have trust, and then you can truly care and guide them. Mm -hmm. And they're making the best decision that you possibly can help them make. Yes. And then you're not really selling. You're more guiding yeah. is what I find. And people, people will pay for that mm -hmm. because there's value in it. When you bring value, uh, that's what people are paying for. Yeah. And I think going with the real estate too, um, actually another story. I had a friend who's selling his home as well. Uh, he's another person that gives a lot to the community in that. And you and now when he's selling his home, everyone's just trying to, they're advocating for him. They're just like, oh my, this guy's been helping me out. He's been there. It's like, we got to help this guy, you know, you know, sell his home, right? And so people are sharing it all over the place. So it's not the reason you do things to get benefit, I think. But there is definitely, you know, some, you know, benefits in that way in marketing if you're just generally a nice person, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they say nice guys finish last. I don't believe it for no, a second. Not no, at all. No, not at all. Don't not believe at all. it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, 
in this do-it-yourself craze, mm -hmm. uh, some people are, uh, you know, deciding they're going to take out their iPhone, take some pictures of their house, mm -hmm. uh, write up a few words and throw it on the internet and it's going to sell. <laughs> yeah, tell me how's that been? Uh, how's that going in your experience for people? Well, it's the odd one sells. Yeah, the odd one sells. But what I'm finding is most of the time, like you were talking about, getting an expert in the field. Mm -hmm. People now are so educated. About ninety-four percent of uh, the population starts looking for their house on the internet. Yeah, and guess what they're looking at? Photos. Lots of them. Yeah, Lots of them. and if the if the photos aren't done well, mm -hmm. then they don't go see the house. Yes. It's that simple. And I think a reason why that happens is that uh, because the technology is so accessible, uh, what that means is that anybody can do it. But, and so the level of quality used to be if to do a good photo, you needed equipment, you needed the know-how and all that. So you had to pay for that. Now people are like, well, you know, I, I got almost 95% of it, you know, good, I can do it myself. So everyone's jumped on that. But now, as you're saying, education is there. So we're so used to seeing 90%. We're so used to seeing, you know, good enough because uh, it's a high quality camera and that. So now to stand out and actually get noticed uh, without just adding to that noise, you need to tackle that last 5%, that last 10%, which is something that you can only get through your experience, right? Okay, so yeah, so the quality is in the last ten percent, is what you're saying. The, the yeah, to get noticed. Actually, I have a, <laughs> I kind of have a, a little ex analogy for that. There's mm -hmm. a, I always say the suit example. You know, wearing a suit is a very difficult to do. You know, you can just any no one anybody can, can put on a suit. Anyone can put on a suit, right? But we all know that you know you go into a, maybe a trade show or convention and you know everyone's kind of you know they're looking you know looking nice but you always know when that one guy walks in you know wearing you know he's he's looked at the details he's got he's got everything in its place everything fits him just perfectly you notice that right how much more effort did he have to put in to, to get all those little details and he looks i mean someone wearing a suit he looks about 90 percent as good as the other guy but what do you actually remember when you're just so used to seeing everything? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, same thing with photography. Yeah. And I think, you know, you might be assuming that a lot of people have uh, decent photography equipment. Yes. And I think that's probably less of the norm than what you might think. Because mm -hmm. for someone to have a true quality uh, wide angle lens and a, you know, digital SLR. Yes. Yes, the prices have been coming down and you can get a pretty decent one, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but most people are using point and shoots or, or their phones. Yes. And they're great for selfies and snapshots and whatever. They're not designed to take in a room. So I see, I see pictures on the internet sometime on the MLS of, you know, it's a bedroom. And the only thing that's in the shot is the single bed because they don't have enough <laughs> wide angle on their, on their lens. Yeah. And they can't get back far enough. And that's what you get. And you go, well, I can't get any perspective of how, the, how big this room is. I can't even see the flooring because all I've got is the bed and some of the wall. Mm -hmm. And so that, that takes away. You can't see the light fixture. There's a lot of details missing of the actual room. Yes. And so professional will, will really help out in that area. Yeah, and it's other thing is accuracy. Because a lot of automatic settings, they'll change color on you. They'll, um, you know, maybe they'll apply some filters, things like that. You might not even know that your camera's applying that kind of stuff. Okay. And, and I think honesty is really important when you're representing a house. Mm -hmm. And the more accurate, when someone sees a photo and they go, okay, yeah, that looks like the house. And if they walk into that house and go, well, this doesn't look like the photo, you've got a, you got a trust issue built up. On, you know subconsciously so that's the other job of the photographers to make sure that you're you're capturing the actual yeah photo. so the color of the walls brown not orange or whatever yeah, right? it's yeah. got to come out the right the right tint yeah definitely okay yeah. so staging what in photography either for houses or mm -hmm. or even for taking some pictures of the family staging yeah. is important yeah well you can yes yeah, so staging in real estate is I mean I mean, I'm not a stager. This is, again, going back to like weaknesses and knowing that. Mm -hmm. If I assume that, yeah, I've, I've photographed a lot of houses. I know what kind of looks good. 
but then a stager will come along and just be like, oh my goodness, did you actually put that with that and make that? You know, it's like, you know, it's like they, they, will, they will tell you. And um, so again, uh, staging is really important to have someone who knows no staging because I go in, I can take the photo, um, your team goes in, takes a photo, but if the house isn't staged to sell, like, why are you wasting all this time investing in things if you're not, if what you're photographing isn't looking its yeah. best? Like one of, one of my pet peeves is, yeah. uh, you know, either agents or for sale by owners that take a picture of the bathroom and don't lower the toilet seat. It's like, just close the seat before you take the picture. Just, just, just a little bit, you know, just, we don't want their mind wandering down the toilet, right? Yeah, you know? not, it's, yeah it's not a big staging thing, mm -hmm. you know, or take stuff off the kitchen counter, or put, put things away, you know, it's just little stuff like that. Take the pictures off the fridge and the, the, you know, the sticky notes and all that kind of stuff. It's just little stuff. You were also talking just other family photos. If you're, if uh, makeup is really important in wedding photography, you can say a makeup person is to, uh, a, to a bride's look as uh, staging is to a real estate photo. Because, uh, you know, if you get uh, someone that's not wearing the proper makeup on their day, you know, you can, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much, if their red's like too red or their eyes are too dark, you know, they're, they're gonna, that's stuff that's not gonna photograph well. And you need somebody who knows when to say, that's too much, that's not enough, get in that glare, glare off the skin and oh, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 okay. So, so how have you gotten better by failing forward, so to speak? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I learned photography very, very quickly. Um, when I, my very first job, like when I first started in the photography with the newspaper, um, I, I just, every single day I went out and I started shooting photographs. Um, I went on YouTube, I learned as much as I could. I talked to my wife, got some ex uh, knowledge. And in about three months was when I got my very first customer from the day I picked up a camera. And a lot of people find it's kind of weird. And I think the thing that got me from zero to, uh, to a job at first was that I really didn't have, I, I was really going out there and I was making a ton of mistakes and then I would go to somebody and say, here's my photos, what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong? So I don't think I had any more talent than anyone else, but I just feel I failed quicker than, than I don't know, does that make any sense to you? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, we, in, in our business we say you gotta fail, in any business, mm -hmm. you gotta fail massively. Because yes. if you're not failing enough, it means you're not attempting things, you're not trying new things, you're not pushing the limits. Mm -hmm. And so by failing a lot, you will actually succeed way more than the cautious person. Yes. Actually, yeah. even, even for the show, I was <laughs> uh, just a little, I, I, we're supposed to come up with you know, some things, some talking points. and. I, uh, it took me forever to do it. I waited to the last minute doing it. I was, wor I was worrying about it. What should I bring up? And I couldn't think of anything. And then, uh, you know, your, one of your assistants, Leah, kind of emailed me, gave me a poke, and I just wrote something down. And as soon as I did that, all of a sudden, you know, I just felt better. I got over it. And then all of a sudden, I was reading what I wrote, and I was just like, okay. You know, and then the ideas started flowing. And, but it took making that first, you know, a rough draft that you know I eventually threw away, yeah. right? Yeah. So, well, yeah. we call that writer's block, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, sit there and stare at a blank page, and yeah. they say, "Just start writing. It doesn't matter what Just you write. Writing. Write something." Yes. And then out of that action will come mm -hmm. some good things. There's another story about two two groups. They they're a pottery group, like building uh, mm -hmm. pots out of pottery and vases and things, and they divided the class into two groups. Yeah. And the one was tasked to make the best vase possible yes and the other group was going to be judged on quantity of vases that they made mm. and which group do you think created the best vase quantity the quantity because mm. as they were making more and more and more they started to learn ways of putting a vase together that that took away some of the errors yes. while the group that was set on building the best vase yes. they didn't try enough they didn't fail enough to make the best vase mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting and I think that's the way, life that's yeah. life and that's go that's the even the expert thing too right because yes the quantity person they made the better vase uh, but they had all those those failures so I mean when you're talking about going to an expert the expert has done those failures whereas you're 
you're down here. You're yeah. on step number one, right? right? So you don't want to be putting your, your first failure out to the public as a professional thing. So you want to talk to the person who's done yeah. Yeah, the multiples. Yeah. So you don't want to fail at selling your home. So you might no. want to call the Decker team. <laughs> yes, please call the Decker team. <laughs> Do not do it yourself. Okay, Mike. So the number to reach you if they want uh, special photography done? Yes. Uh, my phone number is 613-710-7104. That's for our businesscontent.ca which is our commercial and real estate photography. Or if you know someone who's getting married, uh, MikeNessPhoto.com uh, would be the person to, uh, the website you'd want to okay. go to for that. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm just gonna talk about a couple of our lovely properties that we have awesome. for sale. One of them I'm very interested actually in. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, which one are you very interested in? But maybe the one I kind of had a hand in photographing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember, was it Klingon Lane? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well Klingon Lane is uh, 589,000 if you're very interested in it. Four bedroom uh, property. One of the bedrooms is currently a uh, a giant closet. Yes, it's beautiful. And, and that uh, that property is, um, it's all renovated, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's got granite countertops, yeah. uh, lovely bathrooms. It's just, it really doesn't look like an older home in a mature neighborhood, but mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. Uh, newer shingles on the roof and uh, nice setting, beautiful setting. They say in real estate, location, location, location. The other one is located just uh, minutes out of Manatic, and it's a waterfront property on uh, Boucher. If you're French, it might be Boucher, Boucher but yeah, in Benetic we Boucher. call it Boucher. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's a lovely uh, waterfront property for 750. So if you'd like information on these properties, you can go to DeckerTeam.com or you can give us a call at 613-860-4663. Have a great day.